Hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk about my PhD project, which is still a project um, ongoing. And I will talk about, um, well, my work focuses on collagen 6 congenital muscular dystrophy and the search and the testing of a potential treatment strategy that we might be able in the future to put into clinics, but we are at the moment far from that. So let's start with the disease itself. So collagen 6 CMD is a rare neuromuscular spectrum disorder, and the primary symptoms are muscle dystrophy and contractures and hypermobility in the tendons. But there are also other organs and tissues involved, and there might be even more than we know about yet. So genetically, this disease is caused by mutations in the three collagen 6 genes, and in very rare cases also in col 12 a one there are recessive and dominant negative disease causing variants and an often observed type of mutations are dominant negative glycine substitutions. So on the right you can see the assembly of collagen 6, so we have three alpha chains that are encoded by the three genes. These put together monomer, then dimer and tetramer, and these tetramers are then secreted into the extracellular matrix where they form fibrils and the supporting network. As you can see, these tetramers have globular domains on both ends and a triple helix in between. And this triple helix consists of so-called triple helical repeats, which is a glycine, two amino acids, a glycine, two amino acids, and so on. So this glycine is very essential for the structure of this uh, triple helix. So and if we have this glycine substitution, and um, when we have at least one of these alpha chains in the tetramere that has such a substitution, then we get a kink in this triple helix, leading to less secretion and no formation of a, such a nice network. And... Um, as I said, only one of these alpha chains has to have such a mutation, and then we get the phenotype. And this leads to only one out of 16 tetramers that are formed correctly in a heterozygous case. So the aim of a potential therapy approach is to allele specifically knock down the pathogenic allele so that we can increase the number of normal tetramers. And now the problem is that we have a rare disease here, and most of the disease-causing variants are very rare, almost private. So when we uh, want to be in the clinic someday, it would be difficult to do it mutation-specific. So what I'm trying to do is to find an allele-specific approach, but that is mutation-independent. And for that, I'm using a method called CRISPR-Off, and this is a CRISPR-based epigenome editing. And it uses a DCAS9, so a nuclease-deficient <laughs> Cas9 that can still bind the DNA, but it's not able to produce a double-strand break anymore. And this DCAS9 is coupled to a transcription repressor called CRAP, and most importantly, to a methyl transferase domains. And when we now target this DCAS9 to regulatory elements of our target gene, it methylates these regions, leading to a transcription repression of our target gene. And the advantage of this method is that the knockdown is still present when this CRISPR-off construct is absent. Uh, and this is why the, uh, this is because the methylations are quite stable and even over several cell divisions. So as I said, I want to be mutation independent, but allele specific. So I have to find common variants that are in the regulatory elements so that I can use this CRISPR off approach, and I have to face these with a pathogenic variant. And therefore I used nanopore sequencing and especially Cas9 enrichment. And I used an excision approach. And when I started doing these sequencings, I had a DNA extraction method that was not very good for high molecular weight genomic DNA. So when I did this ex uh, excision approach with double cuts on both sides, then I had, at the end, I had really nice coverage, but in the middle, there was not so much going on. So I uh, changed that to this brick layer approach where you have several uh, fragments that are overlapping so they can more even out this coverage. But I wasn't really happy with it. I wanted to have reads that go from one side to the other and it's a region of uh, 58 KB. So I was looking for another uh, DNA extraction method and I used now the uh, New England Biolabs Monarch kit. And as you can see here, I get a quite nice coverage and also many reads that go from one side to the other. So this is what I wanted to have. For the data analyze, uh, I aligned with Minimap2 and called and faced the variant at that time with Medaka. Now I changed to Claire 3 for my, the rest of my experiments. And I had to filter these variants that I got for heterozygous variants so that I'm able to differentiate between the alleles and they have to be in the regulatory elements. So now I'm able to design specific guide RNAs and in theory it should work, but of course I have to test this. 
And the cells that I'm using are uh, patient-derived primary fibroblasts, and these are also cells in the muscles that are uh, expressing the collagen-6, and uh, so I want to target these in the cell culture. And it's difficult because fibroblasts are not known for their transfectability. And normally we would start with a plasmid-based me method, and um, the CRISPR-OF method was published last year, so uh, this is the way to go here. And you could use transfection reagents and electroporation, and I did that, and also with um, cell sorting, but it didn't really work for my fibroblasts. They didn't um, really take it up, or the transfection uh, efficiency was not very high, and I didn't get enough cells at the end to do further analyses. So I switched to an RNP, so ribonucleoparticle-based approach, and you can use, uh, you can buy the protein and uh, use that with your guide RNA, which is difficult when you have a quite new method. Um, but I find another method that are engineered virus-like particles, and this paper um, that I'm referring to is was published just this year. And the good thing here is that I have a transfect producer cells, which are basically hex cells, and they are really easy to transfect. And these produce the RNPs for me, put them into these virus-like particles, and I can use the uh, virus-like particles on my primar uh, primary fibroblast cell. So uh, this is what I'm doing quite uh, right now. And now as I'm going for an epigenome editing and I want to see methylations, I can here use the same approach that I used to call the variants again. So I can use the Cas9 enrichment again and just have to call the um, methylations with Remora. And here you can see my first results with a specific guide RNA. So I used a methyl artist for the visualization. And on the left, you can see um, the experiment with the scramble gRNA. So this is not supposed to bind anywhere in the genome. So this is my control. And you can see the both alleles in orange, the mutated one, and in blue, the wild type. And on the left, you can see there's no real difference. But on the right, when I use one allele-specific guide RNA, uh, you can see that there's a difference. I would show you, but I hope you can see at the beginning uh, that the mutated allele is more methylated than the wild type allele. And um, yeah, there's a lot of optimization still needed for the EVLPs, for example, and that I have a pool of guide RNAs and I can you do that. And I'm doing right now quite a lot of optimizations, but I'm hopeful that I can figure everything out in the next week and I'm confident that I can solve these issues and hopefully someday we can really take this approach into the clinics and help someone, but still in the future. So yeah, at the end, I want to thank the German Society for Muscle Diseases and QCMD for funding this project, and thank you all for your attention. <laughs>